In this video we are going to present to you the most prominent differences between Jira Server and Jira Cloud. The whole video is going to be divided into three major segments. In the first one we are going to focus on navigation and all the changes regarding that. In the second one we are going to be talking about the issue screen, which is a bit different in the cloud version of Jira. And in the last third section we are going to be talking about project types in the cloud version showing you all the most important changes in that area and also comparing them to project types that are available in Jira server. Let's begin! From the navigation perspective, there are two main areas that will require your focus. The first one is the Your Work section. This is a completely new tab that gives you access to your most recently worked on items that are divided into several categories. First of all, at the top you can see the projects that you've been working on lately. Below that you can have a look at which Jira issues you have been working on previously, which places in Jira you've recently visited, which Jira issues are waiting for your attention and also the section that will show you all the favorite areas of your Jira that you've marked with a star. You can also find some additional sections over here at the top. Looking at the top menu of Jira, you will notice that it looks more or less similar to what you're used to, but there are also some slight differences. First of all, any additional apps or add-ons to your Jira will be grouped under the Apps section over here. Secondly, there is also the Issues section missing, but instead of it, we have the Filters section that of course allows you to have a look at all the filters in your Jira, but also you can get to the advanced issue search from this area. There will also be some slight differences in the left menu when you get into your specific projects, but we will discuss these elements in the third part of this video. Now let's have a look at the issue screen. You can look at the issue details in two different ways. If you access the issue section from the list and you will click on one of the issues to get to its details, this is the screen that you will get. As you can see, it's a little bit similar to what you're working with in Jira Server. When you get to the Kanban board though and click on the issue, you will get to a similar screen with all the issue details but displayed as an overlay on the board that you had in the background. On this screen you will find all the important sections regarding the issue like issue summary, issue description, attachments, links, comment section, history, work log, and also on the right side all the fields that are relevant to this issue divided into three different categories. The first category is called details and it will show you the most important fields connected to this issue. Then you will also have a category which by default is collapsed that contains additional fields which can be viewed on the level of the issue that you're looking at. There is an option to pin some of the fields with this pin to top icon that will then add those fields to the pinned fields section which will be hidden if you don't have any fields in it. If you want to configure which fields appear over here, you can always access the additional configuration options. Let's have a look at some more interesting changes in this area. Let's imagine you want to change the status of your issue. You need to choose this button over here containing the list of all the statuses available for your issue and choose the status to which you want to transition the issue to. That's it, no additional buttons. Also, some of the features that were hidden in Jira Server under the More button now are available over here under the three dots icon. So if you want to log work, move the issue, clone the issue or perform any other action listed over here, this is the place to go. It's quite a common mistake that people try to search for these elements over here, but as you can see, this icon doesn't present you with the same list of options. One last thing that I want to draw your attention to is the section down below called Activity. It's very similar to the server version, but the Activity tab is missing from here, and now you have only the History tab, which still contains all the important changes done to your issue, so you're covered. Also, the Add Comment field is pinned to always be visible, so if you scroll up on the ticket like this, it stays on the screen and I can still quickly add a comment if I want to. Speaking about comments, one last thing that is really cool is that now you can copy the direct link to the comment, so if you want to share 
the specific comment with someone else, it's as easy as clicking this button over here. Let's now take a step into the projects area of your Jira. A project template is a predefined configuration of a project specifying issue types, workflows, features, screens and other things that you can find in a project configuration. You might not have all the templates listed here because their availability depends on which Jira products you have. Let's have a look at the most prominent changes connected with all of the three Jira products and their project templates. Project templates for Jira work management, which is supposed to be the equivalent of Jira core, contains four new areas that we want to talk about. The first one is the list section that presents to you the list of issues inside your project, with the possibilities of filtering, grouping the elements by specific criteria, and also inline editing all the information displayed on this screen. The second area is the calendar, which allows you to have a better look at your planning. Over here, you also can use the filtering which was available in the list presented before. The timeline feature will allow you to have a Gantt-like view at all the elements described with the start date and due date fields, giving you the possibility of creating dependencies between those elements, filtering them, and also viewing the timeline at different time perspectives like weeks, months, or quarters. The forms feature allows you to design, preview, and share the create issue forms that can be used, for example, for interdepartmental cooperation or just for simplicity. Software development templates, coming of course from Jira software, will additionally allow you to work with the roadmap, which is similar to the timeline, but instead of showing the breakdown of tasks and subtasks, it focuses on epics and all the issues connected with those epics. Here, you will also be able to create dependencies or connections between the epics, change the time frame that you're looking at, and share or export the data. With Jira Cloud, Premium and Enterprise versions, you will also get access to team calendars and inside asset management, which in cloud is actually just called asset management, that will definitely come in handy when working with Jira Service Management templates. Let's have a look at what changes are available over here. In your ITSM projects, you will now be able to find additional queues divided by the category of request types like service requests, incidents, problems, changes, or post-incident reviews. The change calendar is where you can find and schedule changes across all of your Jira service management projects. The change requests available over here can also be connected with incidents that they cover. The last two features we want to mention here are alerts and on-call sections. They are connected with the Ops Genie product. They allow you to define instant notifications based on certain triggers and also create the availability schedule of your service team. Switching to Jira Cloud, you also should be aware of some non-functional changes like built-in automation that allows for easy creation of automatic rules and behaviors, reducing the number of manual tasks. This feature is also available in Jira Server with some apps. Talking about apps, there might be differences between them in server and cloud versions. It has to be checked individually, especially when you're migrating between these systems. Cloud version has a different API. Again, if you're migrating, you might need to rewrite some of your automatic scripts and custom-made apps. It's worth mentioning that the listeners are not supported in the cloud. You also cannot configure an SMTP server for outgoing notifications. You can configure Jira to send emails on behalf of your domain, though. Last but not least, you won't have any direct access to the database. If any of your built-in solutions require that, you will need to find a workaround. These are, of course, not all the differences that can be found between server and cloud versions. We've focused on those that will allow you to feel comfortable while switching between the tools and also on new features, which will help you get the most out of your Jira cloud. Thank you. We have the right expertise to handle your project. Discuss your needs with your C Prime sales representative or go to cprime.com slash Atlassian.